Hello. How important is culture for you? Is it something like this? Maybe like this? Maybe like this? Please, give me a show of hands. All right, don't be shy. <laughs> okay. I am a management professor, and for the past 20 years, I have been looking at the conditions for sustainability of cultural organizations, private, not-for-profit, or public. And so, the issue of measuring the importance of culture is one of my tasks. And of course, how can you measure importance in a slightly more rigorous way than the show of ends? Economists would say, for instance, let's look at spending. And as a matter of fact, if we look at how much governments and households in Europe spend for culture, we find a remarkable similar percentage. Approximately 1.5% of our total spending goes on culture, cultural products or cultural activities. And if we look at how this spending has changed over time, for instance, as a consequence of the 2008 crisis, we see that in Europe, uh, more or less, governments have spent over time the same amount of money. But some countries instead have actually dropped the investments of culture. Because in times of difficulties, there is always something more important, something more urgent to spend on. And so, if we look at direct spending as a proxy for importance, we may be led to believe that culture is this important. But how about indirect spending? Consider tourists. A lot of tourists, we know, come to a specific place particularly because of the characteristics of its culture. And when they come, they spend for transportation, they spend for hospitality, they spend for souvenirs and things like that. So, if we add indirect spending to direct spending, the importance of culture gets like this. Why would some tourist come to a specific place because of its culture? The fact is that culture is what shapes the idea we have of a specific place. It builds our imagination and our expectations on what we will see and do. When Walt Disney decided to fund its first animated movie, Snow White, in 1937, he built a whole library full of children illustrated books because he wanted to get a sense of how a, a nasty witch or an innocuous apple could transform into a poisonous one in different countries. So he wanted to create images to which children and their families all over the world could relate to in building their imagination about what a scary wood looks like, what a beautiful princess is. Consider opera. In any country, and definitely Italy is one of them, there is a tiny percentage of people that regularly attend opera. We did the research in our research center a few years ago in which we looked at approximately 800 theaters and festivals worldwide for four years and looked at the different titles that were performed. You'll be happy to know that out of the top 10 titles that account for approximately one quarter of all the shows, seven are in Italian. And as a matter of fact, the top four Italian composers, Verdi, Puccini, Rossini, and Donizetti, represent almost one-third of all performances worldwide. 
Now, what does this mean? It means that either because you like opera or if you ever heard an opera or even if you ever sang an aria under the shower, chances are that you, will, you were singing or hearing my mother tongue, Italian. Now, why does this matter? It matters because opera made some Italians feel Italian. Opera attracts many tourists. Opera, indeed, helps shaping a little bit part of the international communication of some of the companies of Made in Italy. So if we add to direct and indirect spending the capability of culture to build and trigger our imagination, then maybe its importance gets like this. Let's go further. Decades of studies in management and economics have told us that research and science is important to drive uh, economic and social growth and development, rightly so. But then my question to you is, how come art is for play and science is for real? Why don't we look at art also a way, as a way to enhance talent. If we start thinking in this perspective, then we can look at pieces of art as actually outcome of a research process, not just from an individual artist, but from the history of art, from the history of science. Incidentally, this piece of art that you may have recognized, it's Uomo Vitruviano by Leonardo, has no market value. Because, in fact, by law, it cannot be traded. And let's look at a more contemporary one. This is another artist that has triggered us about the value of art. Would this piece of art be more valuable when it is hanging on a wall? Would this piece of art be more valuable when it is on a canvas or when it actually is being destroyed during an auction? And if you add to this the fact that this particular artist, as many other ones, um, consider culture as politics, then we can start wondering that if we add to what we have said also the political and the research dimension, culture becomes possibly this important. But wait a minute. Let's go back for a second to our basic question, to our initial question. How important is art and culture for you? Imagine yourself in a daily routine activity. Here you are, walking on the street, and you see skyscrapers and monuments, and then you have your earphones, and there is a song, your favorite song, playing, and then you walk by, you hear a familiar language, stop into a bar, get a cappuccino, drink it while you browse the news. A very familiar, typical, routinary activity. Now think about, remove everything that has to do with culture from this picture. Gone are the skyscrapers. Gone are the monuments. Gone are the sounds. Gone is your favorite piece of music that reminds you of the first kiss you gave. Gone are the odors and the taste of everything you liked. You are naked. You are disconnected. It is remarkable how something that is so important and ubiquitous is so difficult to talk about and see. And definitely culture is something like this. We think about it when we are considering highbrow galleries, operas, masterpieces that have shaped our aesthetic and the way we look at reality, 
but we no longer consider it as part of our daily routinary life. When do we realize that it is important? When we no longer have it, when we are far from home, when we are homesick, in time of disaster. What I'm trying to say here is that, in fact, culture is what gives us energy. Culture is our renewable source of energy. Culture is what keeps us rooted in a specific place, but at the same time gives us the wings to feel at home everywhere in the world. And this is particularly important now, because we are way more mobile. And think about it. The very basic and innocuous question that we often ask ourselves, where are you from, is becoming increasingly meaningless. What becomes more important as a question is, where do you feel at home? Culture is what makes us feel at home. Culture is what connects us to space, to time, to other people. And so, no matter how rigorous we are when we measure the importance of culture, we are always going to underestimate it. Because, in fact, culture is that important. Thank you.